it focuses on us because we can't really take hits from it. Okay, it is trying to hit me, but I'm strafing away. As long as those Gravitons don't hit us. Um, and we can get in here. Ah! Okay, we're kind of caught inside of him. This is not good. My shields are all screwed up, too. I'm shooting at it from inside its belly here. Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy, gaming, and in this episode, we are going to start working on uncovering the rest of the territories here in X4. Um, and we got a lot of a lot of different things to do. Um, I have been waiting for a long time at my new defense tower for a K to come through, so I can start the recording and have you guys watch this thing just absolutely annihilate it. But um, the K's haven't been coming through lately. <laughs> it's the Xenon almost know what I have waiting for them on the other side. Um, and but I you know I can tell you e even before this thing was finished a few K's came through earlier and even you know even before it was like fully decked out it was still taking them out and and now it's fully decked out it focuses on us because we can't really shit take hits from it okay it is trying to hit me but I'm strafing away as long as those gravitons don't hit us um, and we can get in here. Ah. Okay, we're kind of caught inside of him. Okay, this, yeah, I'm caught. Oh, son of a bitch. I'm like totally glitched inside of him here. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay away from the grab dunce. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is not working so well because it's just throwing me all over the place and I can't freaking. Watch out for those gravitons. Okay. No. Okay, I think we finally have control of the situation here. Whew. Okay, so, well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, shit. Alright, I'm just gonna start shooting at it because I'm stuck inside of it now. We're gonna take some uh, explosion damage here, but. This is not good. My shields are all screwed up too. I'm shooting at it from inside its belly here. Okay, did it spit me out? I don't even know where the hell I'm at. Oh, it threw me way the hell up here. Okay. Man, that was rough. I don't want to boost because... Okay, one of its engines are obviously out. Yeah, it's going to go down. And it's, of course, it's out of range for my guns, but I, I, I don't want to actually get any closer. It's... Yeah, it's... Explosion there it goes. Oh, that was rough, man. We got caught inside of it. Okay. Um... Let's see if, if we had any casualties there. So we're going to go here. Logbook. Wow. Look at that. Absolutely zero casualties with that encounter. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I, I was almost the casualty. Uh, by the way... You know, making a cross defense platform like this is certainly not an original idea. Um, I'm sure a lot of a lot of players have used this design, but I first saw it in action with you know with its current loadout by watching a YouTuber named oh what was his name? Hold on a second, let me look it up real quick. So I want to give him credit. Okay, his name is Francis John, and he's a, I think he's an Irish feller, and he's just hilarious. He's absolutely buddy. So if you guys have not 
seen, you know, uh, look up on, on YouTube, Francis John, pretty much spelled as you think. Uh, he does a lot of other, you know, types of um, videos too. He's not just an X4 guy, but his X4 videos are just hilarious to watch. And he's got a really good sense of humor and it's very funny. But he set this up at this gate, more or less in the same position that I'm doing it. And I was very impressed with how effective it was. You know, once this is fully operational, we don't, we shouldn't have to be here at all. It should completely hold its own without any trouble at all. I mean, that's what I saw anyways on his video. And his video wasn't that old. So, you know, it wasn't an older, really an older version of the game to speak of. And we just got to get turned around here. Oh, look at that. He's moving. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Oh, he was trying to get through. Oh, okay. Well, that works out much better for us then. Look at our station just throwing plasma at him. Nice. We don't have to actually get any closer than this. Oh yeah, he's toast. X awaiting orders. Okay, well that worked out way better than I was expecting to. A couple of things, and uh, this was mentioned in the comments too by you guys. In the last episode, I had not equipped each one of the discs uh, with all of the turrets. And I realized that after I finished recording that episode, so I went back and got all the turrets set up. So every single turret uh, or disc that you see here has eight um, large turrets and four small turrets. Um, so we got that done. I also had not put any shields or turrets on the storage, so I, so I fixed that too. And yeah, this thing is just a monster. It is <laughs> absolutely a monster. I'm like, it's just amazing. Um, I, I don't think we, I, the, the one th time it could get into trouble, um, is that if a K comes through while there are also a bunch of other small ships and the tower is focusing on some of those other small ships, but I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, it can happen and it probably, it may, maybe at some point will happen, but if a K comes through by itself, it is just, it doesn't have a prayer. It absolutely doesn't have a prayer with this station. It's just a beast. So I'm pretty pleased, you know, with it uh, overall. So yeah, it's just that you you, <laughs> you can see it go to town on these smaller ships, but uh, I don't know. Let's let's take a quick look up in Tharka's Cascade just to see if there's even a possibility that a K might be on its way here, but I doubt it. I mean, I literally have been sitting in front of this station for hours in real life. Uh, and haven't seen one come in, come through for a, a long time. Now I have some bad news. Um, the Xenon have indeed taken over uh, Family Zen, which really sucks. So we need to try and get up there as soon as we can and, and stem the tide before they continue expanding because I don't want to lose the split. Um, but that kind of segues into the next thing. I am, let's see, I am at night plus 19 with Terran protectorate one more point and then I'll be at 20 with him which means we'll be able to um, get the the license for for the Asgard uh, and I'm gonna I want to buy an Asgard and use that you know to to st start pushing the Xenon back and taking their stations back um, now, I know I could also do that with destroyers. In fact, I can do it with the two destroyers I have now. It just takes a very long time. Um, so I'd rather, you know, wait a little bit longer, bring the Asgard to bear. Because the main gun or laser on that Asgard is just insanely strong. Um, so that's kind of the tentative plan as far as that goes. And once we get the Asgard and kind of, kind of assemble a fleet, uh, then we'll head up to family uh, families in and see if we can push the Xenon back out of there. 
Uh, okay, well, anyway, so let's see what else do I need to tell you. I have, while I've been sitting here at the station, I have not been idle. I have expanded my headquarters significantly. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, also, I have 182 million in the wallet, and we have a net worth of 730 million uh, in change there. So we're doing good uh, as far as that goes. If we look at the station here. Oh, um, cock ships have started to, to show up now, too. Um, I think I've kind of reached that point in the game where it starts spawning in their hives and shit. So, <laughs> so now i got to deal with them, too. They're not really that big of a threat, but they are kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so I have, uh, I have the Nemesis on patrol in Grand Exchange 4, the Dragon on patrol in 3, and the Rattlesnake on patrol here in Grand Exchange 1. And I've actually given the Rattlesnake a command to protect this area because they, they seem to, you know, come out of this gate here. Though, I, I don't know why he's just sitting there not doing anything. Oh, he he is. It's just we, we got so much going on that the... We got a little bit of frame rate going on here in the game. So yeah, this <laughs> this tower though, it's just it's just awesome. Um, I'm not planning on replacing the laser towers. They will, most of them will probably eventually, you know, get destroyed. But I don't think we need them anymore, anyways. But I mean, they're certainly helpful at the, for the moment. N. But yeah, the xenon are just getting absolutely pounded. Um, coming through or trying to get back through, you know, some of the ships can actually get through, you know, if they're already up to full speed, but I'd say maybe at most 10% of them, if even that get through. And it's funny too, because some of them, when they come through, will, um, actually run right on, right into the, <laughs> into the defense platform and it stops them and just shreds them. So pretty pleased with the performance of it overall. Okay, so let's see. We were going to look at our our station. Maybe we'll luck out and have a K come through while I'm still here. And just watch the station obliterate it. But if we go to the station here and we go to plan build. Um I don't Yeah, I don't I don't think I've we, I've actually shown you this stuff in a while. Um so yeah, I've got to all this little section here is all of our end product stuff. So we have missile component production, we've got shield component production, we've got scanning array production, uh, antimatter converter. We've we already had claytronics. We got a field coil production. I think we had the the turret components, the advanced electronics. I've had for a little bit. Weapon component production, engine part production. Uh, we already had the hull parts. Just trying to see if anything exciting is happening. No. And we'll we'll take a look at the the logical overview too. But I wanted to show you the the actual um, modules first. Let's see over here. I've added some uh, more microchips. I've got a plasma conductor production. I've got an advanced composite production. Uh, I already have the antimatter cell. I had to add a second graphene production. Uh, I had to add a second quantum tube production or module. And I added a second refined metal as well. Over here, in order to, to support all of this stuff. P. We must have attack a pirate or something. Let's get back a little bit over to here. Okay. Um, go back to here. So I had to add more um, habitats, and I went and got the blueprint for the large habitat. I also added a, a second... Here, so now we have a, a dock uh, docking slots for six l uh, large and XL ships. Added more food rations, more medical supply productions, more spice, and more solar arrays. 
uh, to support all of these all of this new stuff if we go into our logical overview everything is running very smoothly as far as this goes um our miners seem to be doing a reasonably good job of of keeping up they we certainly don't have an excess of anything but as long as these products are not running low which they haven't uh, ever that i've i've noticed uh we're you know it's keeping up so we're good to go if uh, it gets to the point where that's not happening then of course i'll just make some more miners and from this point forward i'm only going to use large miners and probably just the heron because it just does such a wonderful job and it does it absolutely doesn't give a shit about attacks from <laughs> from pirates it just shrugs them off it's not a big deal um so yeah we're doing good there i decided to set all of these um, products back to um automatic automatic sell amount um and and just see how well the game manages making sure it doesn't sell too much of it uh, but I just recently did that because before I was manually setting all those limits and I got to think of, well, shoot, let's just, let's just put on the automatic setting and see how it does. And if I notice it's a problem, then I'll go back, you know, to the manual setting. Uh, so all of these are just, you know, sell, sell automatically, which basically means the manager sells what we don't need for production. And then apparently he's, it's smart enough to, to figure that out. Um, let's see over here though. I did increase the storage allocation for the end products because um, these were like all completely full and I'm saying, well, they're out of, we're out of space and it was stopping things. Now, what I really need to do and what I plan to do is we're going to, we're going to set up a, a trading station and I'm going to actually store this excess at the trading station and just set the price super, super high. So, you know, NPCs, if they do buy it, we get top dollar for it if they don't well then it's just an extra storage for us because all this is all stuff that i've constantly needing you know when i buy new ships and stuff so that's why i have these specific items in particular uh the workforce is currently working up to 11 8 37 so currently we have eleven thousand two hundred, and our efficiency is at 94 percent I was having to increase the food rations, but it looks like we're still producing a little bit more than being consumed, so we're good there. Medical supplies is right on the edge, so as soon as this hits 11,837, this is going to be really close. But if we have to add one more medical supply, we have to add one more medical supply. It's not a big deal. We're still doing fine, though, on meat, so um, we're, we're producing 3,000. It's only using 1,800. Wheat is fine. Spices are, are fine and sunrise flowers are fine so yeah i'm just uh really enjoying our factory here it's it's doing good for us and starting to make all the stuff that we need so i'm you know less and less having to to buy uh, from the ai for for components when we build new ships and whatnot okay so anyway that covers that and we probably are not going to have an opportunity to see a k come through here Yeah, those are all, all all just small ships. There's a K up here, but he's been hanging up there for a very long time. Um, so yeah, it's it's almost like the Xenon know uh, that if they come through here, they're <laughs> they're gonna get killed. I mean, it doesn't stop them from sending the small ships through, but for the big ships, it just I'm sure it's probably just coincidence. And at some point, you know, they'll probably show up, but it just hasn't happened in a long time. And I'm uh, I need to get out and start doing stuff. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is that if we go back to player information, uh, we thanks to all this combat and stuff that we've been doing, we now have eight new uh, three star captains. Um, and so I need to pull these captains out of these fighting ships and put them into traders. But I want to uh, I want to open up more territory first so that I can you know then assign them effectively. Um, so I'm just kind of leaving them be for now, but I, I'm not planning on bringing these three star pilots into another major battle, um, you know, before I move them over to a trader. So S. get wrecked, S. <laughs> Look at all those plasma balls. That's crazy. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Um, oh, by the way, I also splurged... I, I think I mentioned this to you guys before, but I absolutely love this katana. 
it's it's definitely probably my favorite Corvette ship so far in this game. It's it's just it's maneuverable. It looks cool, but the acceleration, travel speed, and even just normal speed on this thing is crazy. So look at that. We are going almost a thousand meters per second just on normal power. Um, I went and splurged and, and purchased the Mark IV split engine. Um, I don't ever see myself doing that, you know, for like fleet ships, but for my own personal ship, uh, it was damned expensive for not a whole lot more gain, but what the heck, right? This is my personal, my new favorite personal ship. We could go almost a thousand meters per second, just on normal power. And then the acceleration, you know, when we go into travel drive is just crazy out of this world. Uh, I also switched out to the Terran uh, pulse cannons for, uh, for bolt, uh, bolt casters or, or whatever those weapons are called. Uh, bolt repeaters, yeah. I, I don't know. I call them bolt casters. That's Star Star Wars. Uh, bolt repeaters, uh, and that did increase our our DPS a little bit by doing that. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in. Uh, oh, there is one more thing I need to tell you. We now have. I don't think I told you guys this. Uh, we are now at max teleportation. So if we go here, I now can teleport anywhere on the map, which is fan friggin tastic and going to be so useful. I am planning on starting some of these other research things, but I'm just um, not quite there yet. So I'll get to it at some point. I know I should probably just be working on it now, but some of those I believe require a little bit of questing. Look at the light show over there. And I don't want to take time to do that right now. Uh, we'll get back to it later. So let's see. Um, I think now here, here's what I think. As I've mentioned to you guys before, I do watch other YouTubers play this game. I, tr I do my best to avoid watching YouTubers that are doing story-related stuff because I don't want to spoil that. But if they're just, you know, playing in free mode or doing tutorials or whatnot, you know, I'll watch them. I watch, you know, a lot of Captain Collins, for example. And I think I mentioned to you guys that Francis John guy the other day who's really funny. And a, f and a few others, too. And in the process, you know, I've kind of, I haven't, I've tried not to pay too close attention to it, but I know, sort of kind of know where more sectors are. For example, I know that there's some more sectors down to the south of Holy Vision. Um, and I know there's more sectors that go off, you know, to the, what you might call the east of the map too. I don't think there's anything else to the north or northwest. I think we've gone as far as we can. And likewise, uh, aside from the Earth and Moon, which we're almost ready to get to, I don't think there's anything further to the west either. Uh, but I do know there's sectors to the south and sectors to the east. Um, so we're going to hop in the Pegasus. Actually, the Pegasus version 2. Pegasus version 1 got blown up because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I sent it out to collect drops and I forgot to tell it to dock and it got blown up. It's very sad. Anyway, it happens. Um, so we're going to jump into Peggy and start uncovering uh, more sectors. And I'd like to get this map, you know, mostly, if not entirely, uncovered. Some of you guys told me in the comments that there's a few sectors that won't become available to us until we do some storyline stuff. And that's fine. But at least if we can get the majority of them uncovered, then we kind of know what we have to work with and we can send traders into those areas especially now that we have new traders or, or more traders to work with, uh, level three traders. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that, that light show. It's so awesome. Um, my Pegasus should be parked actually at uh, the defense platform. Incidentally, I set the defense platform up to purchase these components um, so, that we, so that I have them on hand for you know doing repairs and stuff like that. And in the process of doing that, the game changed it to a trading station, um, even though I'm not selling any of the, that product. Uh, in case you're wondering why it looks like a trading station icon, well, because I guess it is now, <laughs> but not really. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to teleport over to our scout. Hold on a sec. Ooh, uh, this ship is currently in internal store. Oh! It's in, in internal storage. Well, shoot, we can just teleport right to the station. And then we'll pull it out at that point. Okay. And then I'm going to send the katana 
uh, back here and just have it, you know, do some patrolling or whatever. And we've got uh, we got some dudes pestering our one of our large miners, but again, that large miner he just does not care. If we click on it, go to information. Look at his shield. <laughs> They're just tickling him. And you know, because this is an XL ship, it just the shield actually no, this is is this an XL or just a large? I think it's just a large. The shield just automatically respawns. I mean, they, he would have to get an absolute swarm of fighters on him or a destroyer before he would actually be in danger. Explosion imminent. Um, oh. Did we just kill a K? I think we... Oh, they just killed a K and we missed it! Oh, the timing it couldn't have been worse! See that K up there? <laughs> it, it happened so smoothly and effortlessly, I didn't even realize it. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Yep, that's too bad we didn't see the light show though. I mean, I heard the turrets and stuff going off, but they go off all the time, so I didn't really think much about it. Look at that. Wrecked. Is that a second K or is that a P? -E? Oh my goodness. Let's go, let, here, let's hop on our ship and see if we can figure that one out. Where is my, uh, where's my dude? Call to dock. Oh man, that sucks that we missed the light show. <laughs> Look at that thing up there, man. That that actually could pop. That might be a second K, you guys. It's kind of hard to say from here. Sometimes the P looks like a K if you don't have the right depth perception going per per perception going on. At least for me, because you know I'm old. All right, let's hop into here. Pegasus Vanguard. Captain May Mayin Dinar, nice to meet you. I just had I just bought the ship. This is my first time I've been on version two of the Pegasus. So I think that's a second K, you guys. Yeah, that thing just got royally wrecked. Um wait, what happened to that second one though? Maybe that second one was just a P. Yeah, I think it was this that I was looking at. It just from a distance it looked like it could have possibly been a K. Or maybe was it this one? Yeah, that's a P too. Ah, that's too bad we missed the show, but <laughs> I mean it was so effortless that we didn't even notice it was happening. So that's kind of a testament to the uh, to the effectiveness of this station. It's just crazy. I know it's not a hundred percent invulnerable. Under the right circumstances, it could get messed up, but, you know, if it does, it's got repair drones and we can always rebuild it. But for the most part, it's doing an amazing job. Okay, so, let's head on out. Man, that sucks that we missed that fight. Would have been cool to see. But, you know, we'll probably get another opportunity to, to see it in action in its, you know, its full power crazy okay so let's take a look at the map situation here what I think we're gonna do first is we're gonna go down to uh, second contact there's a gate right here that I have not um, uh, somebody's bothering station minor one it's probably yeah it's cock Let's see, where, what system is this? This is Grand Exchange 4, so let's tell uh, the Nemesis to go deal with this threat here. Um, probably going to work best to... Wait, hold on. Yeah. Tell them to attack targets in range. And I'm also going to tell the fighters to mimic the commander's behavior. And what that means is that they will independently attack targets in range rather than, 
work off of the the commander for what they're currently doing is interception. Yeah, you know, well, actually, you know what? The interception will actually is better because they'll go after him before they get in range. So never mind. We're gonna keep that um, as it is. Yeah, intercepts fine for that. Okay, hopefully the station miner can survive long enough for that for him to get there. Um, it looks like our in car 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 carchua. I still don't ever pronounce that right. Is coming through too. We could ha ask it to help attack. I just have to remember to take it back off of that because I think they they continue this command until you tell them to do something else. But yeah, let's have him help out there too, just because. He's right there, so we might as well. Oh, his fighters are with him, or her, actually. And they're on interception, so you know what? They'll, they'll actually go after them, too. So let's remove that command, because I'm probably going to forget that I, I put it on, and then it's not going to... And then it's going to sit there for a million years. Okay, so yeah, let's go through this accelerator here. So we're going to start guidance to object. And uh, obviously there's an another system or maybe two or three, I don't know, beyond here. So we'll see what's there. And again, like I said, I know there's some more stuff down south here. So we'll check that out later. I'll meet you guys when we get over to this jump gate. Um, and we'll go from there. All right, here we are at the gate going into a new unknown sector. We haven't explored new unknown sectors in a long time. Oh Entering my goodness. Second contact seven. Look at all the asteroids in this place. This reminds me of the old Orbout, which was kind of in the same position in the older games, as I recall. It was like south of Argon Prime. Is this like the new Orbout? Here, let's do a, a long range. And take a look on the map. This is an Antigone uh, Antigone sector. There's another unknown object that way. And um, let's see. Though many of the exchanges between the Paranet and the Argon in second contact occurred in Flashpoint, perhaps the biggest actually occurred here. The battle was won because of the snap decision made by Fleet Admiral Cy Keswin to launch an offensive against the Paranet, still preparing their forces on the outskirts of the system. The battle proved difficult, with the Paranet outnumbering the then-fledgling Antigone Republic fleet, but Keswin was able to pull his people through it, and the Argon were able to force the Paranet to flee back towards True Sight giving the Antigone another day of respite. Interesting. Um, there's a little bit of Invidium here, but it looks like quite a bit of ore and silicon. All right, cool. If some of you guys don't care about the story, just fast forward the video until we get through it. But I, I find it interesting. And I know some of you do, do actually like to know about the story. I was asked to drop my cargo. Station hauler three. Yeah, these, I, I've had less problem with pirates, but they, it's kind of been replaced now with the, with the cock ship, ships rather. Uh, let's see, station hall or three, where are you at? You're in 18 billion. So that's actually probably a pirate that's harassing you. And look who's going through here. Our katana. Oh man, sucks to be you. Take him out. We are gonna need to, to. Nope, he's just on his way to patrol, so he'll he'll go after him. You are so dead, dude. Well, unless the AI gets stupid, which they might. Oh. Yak, raiding party. Unauthorized attack? Uh, I don't care. Unauthorized kill. Wait, where did that happen? That must have happened in a different system, because I don't think the Katana got to them yet. 
I mean, we, we were already all in the red with the Yaki anyway, so I kind of don't give a shit. All right, anyway, let's um, head over here. stations up in the uh, 10 o'clock position there but I'm gonna let my scouts do all the actual uncovering I just want to find the systems uh, speaking of which Let's go ahead and grab Scout 1 and tell them to come down here and explore. Oh, that was a satellite. That wasn't a gate. Okay, let's do another long range. There's an unknown object there. Those are uh, oh, and there's one here. Okay, let's go. Let's go this way first, and then there's also one right there. Entering second contact. 11. Second contact 11, huh? That's right be, uh, below Argon Prime. See, in the old game, this used to be called Home of Light. And then the one south of Home of Light was Ore Belt. And there is a lot of ore here, so I wonder if it's the same supposedly the same sector but they just renamed it because of the war very interesting um does this look like home of light i don't remember exactly what home of light looked like but it could be i guess i don't know big old planet looming close by that is neat love it uh okay let's see what yeah that raider just got killed All right, let's see what it has to say about this sector. After the Battle of Second Contact 7, the Antigone Argon were safely able to colonize this sector for the surprise halt and fighting caused by Admiral Keswin's brave attack. The sector has since become a small haven for the Antigone Republic, one that they were incredibly proud of. Rich with natural resources and within touching distance of the moon, I uh, moon Icon, from which you can be swiftly transported to the planet aptly named Sanctuary, the sector has seen a lot of growth since the start of the Perrin and Civil War, and many hope it remains so when the conflict ends. Okay, doesn't look like there's any Invidium here, but there is ore and silicon. Nice. Decent amount of stations here, too. Um, I'm guessing there's probably not going to be anything else up north, but we'll go double-check anyways. Those are all stations... Okay, let's grab scout number two. I'm going to probably have to make some more scouts, which I need to do anyways, and have him explore here. Okay, let's go north. That says unknown object. It's definitely not a gator. We could see it. Is this a ship, maybe? Oh no, it's a data vault. Okay. Actually, let's um let's drop a beacon by it. I haven't done a data vault in a long time, but when I come across them, I have been dropping beacons by them so I can come back and get them later. Not really so much for the money anymore, but for the story. DV 
not done. Okay. Station, 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 station. It's actually nice to open up a few more Antigone uh, sectors for a rep. We are currently 15 with them. Uh, I would like to get up to 20 because they may have some stuff that we will want to get from them at level 20. Um, yeah, I'm going to say there's probably not any more gates up this way, so that's probably where second contact stops. Oh, right, there was another unknown object here. Might be a gate, let's see. Man, this would be a good place to come crystal hunting in the early game. I have to remember this place is here. Yeah, that's just a satellite. Okay, um... Let's do one more... long-range scan. All stations. Maybe what we'll do is we'll head south a little bit. There's like a, another um, smaller asteroid belt over here. Let's just go look at over here real quick. Okay. Yeah, let's um let's head south and do one more long range scan before we move on. Like I mentioned to you guys, I didn't look closely when I watched those other videos. I just noticed, oh, there's, um, you know, there's more sectors down there, but I didn't study them to figure out exactly where they were. Because I, you know, part of this game is ex exploration and discovery. I like that part of the game, so I don't want to spoil it for myself. This will be the only time I'll ever be able to discover new sectors for the very first time in X4. Subsequent playthroughs, I'll know where everything is, you know, for the most part. There's something up that way. It's probably a lockbox. Let's just go investigate this this just for the heck of it there it is ah, it's just a lockbox okay I figured that's probably the case okay so um I guess we might as well fly up this way one more long range scan and then if that doesn't work we'll we'll go somewhere else you know what though it looks like we're out of time guys so i think i'm going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here and then we'll just pick up right where we left off in the next episode and keep doing some more exploration and sector uncovering i'm probably going to pull a new trader out of of a fighter and get him down into these sectors to start trading uh two and and I'll probably send some miners over here, uh, at least one, maybe even two miners over here to start working this system, uh, which will also help with rep, not to mention, of course, making us uh, some money. Uh, so with that being said, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.